First climb now, without this fell. Um, it's actually quite warm, and I'm having a good time. But also, my desire to eat is not really there. Um, I'm definitely putting it off, so I should probably stop that. Um, it'd be fine, won't it? miles in um, basically the aim of today is number one to pace myself especially in the first half but throughout but especially in the first half um, and number two is to just be friendly <laughs> because I've done oh well, you know it's just nice when people smile at you and I often find and I've done a couple of events before it's like I have an assumption that people aren't friendly because I'm running like this <laughs> Whereas someone has to instigate it and it just makes it all feel really nice and I forgot how much the community of people is just one of the best bits and also it gets you out your own head so um, it's also quite warm which is fun and um, it's only about 16 degrees which there's like no wind so it is very warm um, yeah about to go up Penny Gent which is there but I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Run to the car with her, yeah, and then get all the stuff out. Hello! <laughs> Gosh, she doesn't look like she's nearly run a marathon, does she? <laughs> oh, my trousers are falling down. <laughs> Hello, how are you? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Gosh, you are hot. I know. Oh. How's it going? It's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, but it's good. Yeah, it's good. Oh. <laughs> you are very hot. <laughs> <laughs> Watching me things, man. Carby? Are you having carby? Can I have a, a bagel, please? Yeah. You seem a lot better this time around than the first time around we saw you, you on the, your first 50 miler. <laughs> this point you were like... <laughs> <laughs> I was struggling about five miles ago. Oh, were you? But not, 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 not crazy. Not bad, mate. Not bad. 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 Of anything, but they're squirting out, you know. I know that. Maybe back of the next well. It's just gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> Are you off? Good luck, see you in a few miles. Hi. Right, I'll another cheeky potato. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> That's some blended in there. <laughs> so we get hit by a car. <laughs> and she's off. A little Jack Sparrow run. This feels wonderful on the quads. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Like, <laughs> Are they sore? I think I'm a bit. I think I'm a bit fast. But it's out. No, downhill. I think I'm You're here really quick. Yeah, I kind of got a bit excited and I'm a bit excited. Oh, God. Right, that is all really wet. Yeah. I know, but I just need you to put stuff in there. Seven and a half. No, no. It's seven miles. Yes, seven and a half miles to the next one, and then three and a half after that, and then twelve. Could you mind filling up the board, please? Yes. Oh shit. Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh yeah, and then after that it's three and a half. Um well I guess we'll see you after England then. Either there's salty things up there. Do you people some nuts in that bag? Yes. 
Fantastic. So last 24 miles, you'll skip the rest of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> skip it, do da, skip it, do. Yeah. See you later. Alright, see you later. Love ya. <laughs> you go, Kate. You said you couldn't see you. She thought you couldn't. Who's big with? Well, Dizzy and what, a five year old. <laughs> bye. Strut that stuff. <laughs> Look at those arms. Like Captain Jack Sparrow. On the last one, you were like dying, your feet were dead. It doesn't hurt any less. Yeah, but, but you're just more used to it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It feels like my bones are bleeding. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm, well, no. I'm gonna go and get but, um, a drink. Yes. Um, and get some snacks. Okay. This camera work must will be very terrible by the way, I'm sorry. 
Well, probably. Oh, is it? Do you think you're maybe about to start? Uh, this is snack bag. I think. Oh, the fact that the fucking sort sort of them them wankers. What so squares? Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's because you um ate like a thousand of them the first ultra? Honestly, I was eating one and I was just like. Oh, yeah. You know what I, mean? I was like, oh. Do you know what? It was like, do it again. I wasn't filming your face. Oh. <laughs> you know what, baby? Um, my feet. Oh, sorry. This is back potato on your carpet. Um, carpet. <laughs> oh my god, Delirium was kicking in. Um, yeah, sort of that. Oh, the bagel. Do you want any for now? When the world's dark, it's better. <laughs> uh, can I, no, can I have it in a bag? Just in a bag. Or just add them in? No, it's just, it's just, it's, 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 it's yeah. But don't, don't put it in the bin, because I might No, yes, that's oh, fine. Oh, they potato, I'm going to see you in three miles. Okay, right, this is too long. That's good in there, but I might eat it. Yeah, but uh... Oh, she looks so cool. Yeah. Oh, backwards cat. Shades on. They, 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 uh, <laughs> 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 we had little number we had, on the left. Because she's cool. She was like, you know, where to go. I'll see my arm. Yeah. Right, okay. Oh, nice. Get a nice little shot of it. Can you see? Where you want Should we do an up and down? <laughs> Whoa. Uh, just on the right. Look at those long legs. This is going to take me four thing. years. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Done the legs. No, Look that way. I think I might be still zoomed in. No, I'm not. <laughs> What's that song about grapes? It's like, um, bum bum bum, got any grapes? Uh, wait, this is a lemonade stand. Bum bum bum, and he said to the man, run in the stand, bum bum bum, got any grapes? And the man said, no, we only sell lemonade. <laughs> Right then. <laughs> so the duck went home. Did the lily? I don't know the rest of it. You know what? Uh, I I had the tiger. I got the eye of the tiger. Oh, that one there. Oh. Um, eye of the tiger. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not even called eye of the tiger, is it? Um. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. Look at those sticks. Yeah, right, right. Oh. Back. We'll get past the uh, homeless people. No! About 36 miles in. About to go back up to the halfway point of Penny Gent, which is up that big hill. Um, Feeling less hurty, but it's only because I'm walking. So hell, running hurts the first um, well, like I don't know what I'm even saying. I just had a moment there of just making sure I just appreciate what's actually happening. You know, like I've got this unbounded, unbroken time. Trails with nature, <clears throat> and to just not let that pass me by. But I think, really, I think I was thinking, how am I gonna <coughs> run 100 miles? Let me go up this giant hill, and then I think we to conclusion that it just always hurts. Doesn't mean anything.
mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain. Coming round the mountain. Bums. Singing. <laughs> Singing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pull. That's the puddle. <laughs> this. Oi. Yes. Where's the? Thank you. Water. Oh, please. I don't know. Floppy hands. <laughs> oh, this bike guy thinks I'm filming him, probably. Yeah. Oh. Mountain goats.
Again. No. Turn around and go back to the beginning. Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Come round, I'll come round. <laughs> oh man, that was real. <laughs> I think that might be the hardest one I've done. Really? Yeah. You did so well, you did it so much faster. <laughs> Oh, you stink! Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like mouldy sweat as well. <laughs> it's hard actually. Yeah. It was fun, but it was hard. <laughs> it's very disappointing. Why we start crazy, man? It's like a snow doing that. Hey, crazy man from snow doing that. Did you really? Okay, what do you want, Dave? Just walk. Oh, I bought a t-shirt. Oh, cool. Explain as well as that I can. Right. My legs are such a good colour, aren't they? They are. Wow. Right, you ready? Ooh. Wow. Let's get these bad pants. You ready? <laughs> oh, they're going to smell. Oh, I think I might have a blister, actually. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, the question is, is the sock going to... <gasps> oh, oh, she oh she's got some blisters. Where? There. Oh, yeah. That's where I get blisters. No, it's not a blister. Oh, it's not. It's a callus. Oh. oh. So... <laughs> that corrupted. <laughs> that is must absolutely stink. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I have terrible sense of smell, so I'm not that bad. Rachel laughs, so I do smell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah. Well, yeah, I will <laughs> think. Yeah, it's not really a... Sorry, if I smell, it's more like a... Or your ankle looks a bit bizarre. Ooh, <sighs> yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> What's that? <sighs> oh. That doesn't look that bad. Look at those bad boys. You just can't really see them, can you? Rachel. Yeah. Have you ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean? <sighs> So um, there's a blister. I may have seen half of one. Ah. <laughs> oh, they hurt. Just do not step on those toes. <laughs> right. You see, there's something like quite strange about the fact that when withdrawal is available and voluntary at any moment, it becomes more enticing to finish. Now, what I mean by that is, in life when we have, when we face, you know, discomfort and, I don't know, discomfort, let's use that as a word. I mean, it is a word, so I'm gonna use it. When withdrawal isn't available and optional and when we have no choice to withdraw, we just have to, you know, sit through it, sit with it. There's a different experience there. But when running ultras, or when doing anything where you are voluntarily putting yourself in a position where you become exhausted, you get tired, things hurt, things start to really hurt, and the, the, the question kind of arises of why, why am I doing this? But the more confusing part is that if somebody was to say to me, let's say, at mile 44 in this ultra when 
you know, things were starting to hurt quite a bit. I was tired, I just felt like I had nothing left. Because my fueling wasn't too great, because because it just kind of hurts. If somebody was to say, hey, you can stop by the way, I'd go, no thanks. <laughs> it's very confusing, it's very confusing. And what I find even more confusing about it is the fact that it is all just one big blur. Like, you know, throughout this entire 12 hours and 57 minutes, there were many, many peaks, many highs, many, you know, this is just amazing. And also many troughs, and many, this is hard, this hurts, I've got no energy, oh god. And many moments of intensity, you know, where the lows felt intense, but also where the highs felt intense, good or bad, who knows, but it's so strange that you experience such a magnitude of, of a thing and then you cross the finish line and it just ends, like it's just over. And then you go home and you, you know, go back to normal life and it's almost like it never happened. It's almost like them, them micro moments, them intimate moments with yourself where you're experiencing something that feels incredibly uncomfortable but you're choosing to continue anyway and I mean there's a lot more to it but it, it all just doesn't really matter <laughs> you know because it's happened it's gone it's it's done but in the moment it feels like the most incredibly meaningful important sincere thing uh not sincere significant thing in the world and then it's over and then when you look back on it i i now can't remember what it feels like and it was only two days ago i can't remember what that pain felt like i can't remember what that tiredness felt like I can't remember what any of it felt like. It, it's almost, I mean, maybe maybe it's trauma, <laughs> but it, th there's, there's no, I, I can't, I can't relate myself to it. I can't, I can't understand it. And I don't know if that's the appeal is that there is, <laughs> there is, it's so confusing. There's no understanding of it. And like, you know, for the first, 35 miles honestly having the time of my life like just having the best day ever like this was just so fun and the pain and the hurt and was you know it was part of it it was fun then beyond that it just became a bit ouchy and the fun became less so fun um but it was fine it, it wasn't a, something i wanted to stop doing you know um it was just a different experience but it's just very confusing because the the alert to me is to you know to see what's possible really and to kind of see what's you know, possible when you go beyond all them doubts and insecurities and fears and that thing in your head that says I can't do that and this hurts and I want to stop and all that when you kind of go beyond that and you realise you kind of open up five million new doors of potential but also just the appeal of just being and just being out in nature and just exploring, adventuring, running, experiencing, seeing, chatting, feeling you know, it, it's such a grounding experience to just come back to, to you know, what we're here to do really, which is just to be. But then there's this other side of it, which is like this quest for an edge, this quest for this really hurts. I'm really tired. Why am I not stopping? <laughs> like, there's no gun to my head. There's no, there's no consequence really. Like okay, if I pulled out, perhaps it would be a bit uncomfortable if, you know, for, for my own self, ego, whatever, if I was like, oh, you know, I, I couldn't finish because I found it too hard. But really, that's not really a big consequence. Like, in the moment, I'd say some, sometimes the discomfort can weigh way more than, than that potential feeling of discomfort of, oh, I quit, you know? I don't really... I don't really care about quitting, I don't really have too much of a self kind of flagellating oh my god if I quit then I'm shit. That doesn't really drive me, I think what drives me is curiosity and confusion. <laughs> because I never thought I could do anything like this ever. Um, I, I used to, well I just, I've always been so scared of everything and so doubting of myself forever, always, forever and so afraid of sensations, feelings, you know, everything. That this is just like, 
jumping straight into the sea. This is like, let's just have it all right now. No resisting, no running away. Let's run straight into it. And actually, there's a great quote by Alan Watts, which is, um, I mean, I'm going to butcher it, but it's something like, when you see a ghost, run straight into it and it will vanish. And it's basically like these things that we fear, that we think we can't do, that we, whatever it is, you know, you define it for yourself. Run straight into it and it will disappear. And it's the same with hurting, it's the same with pain, it's the same with discomfort. When you run into it, it, it does disappear. And it's very strange. <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> it's so bloody confusing. It's so confusing. I do not understand this thing at all. But something... Something that has been created within me after this though is how on earth am I going to run a hundred miles? <laughs> you see, I booked it like um, ten months ago and it kind of has accidentally come round. And the thing is, is that the big part of me knows that it kind of doesn't matter if I think I can or I can't and that of course I'm going to think I can't because I've never done anything like it, you know. And if anything, it's it's very what's the word, uh, alive and enriching to have this feeling of like, Jesus Christ, what on earth am I going to be doing? Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I'm I'm kind of just diving in and just gonna I'm just gonna see. <laughs> but then the other part of me goes, oh how how do you do that you know and i guess you just don't stop i guess you just you just endure the pain for longer and the peaks become peakier and the lows become lower and you just detach yourself from that feeling and that sensation and that experience but i'm so scared <laughs> i'm so excited i'm i'm equally excited as i am terrified because i have no idea what happens beyond that 50 mile mark but i do know that when you get to that 50 mile mark I'm I'm kind of ready to stop. That doesn't mean to say that if, if, if the race was 60 miles, I wouldn't be able to do 60 miles. But then that comes to the question of, well, am I only ready to stop because I know it's the end? You know, like when you run, when you're going for a 10 mile run, you're kind of ready to stop at mile 10 because you know it's the end on most days. When we have a finite finish point, your mind, our minds make that a definitive marker of yes. I expect to feel tired now. This makes sense because it's the end and I, it's over. And I don't need to, you know, I don't need to. I don't need to sustain myself. I don't need to hold anything back. But the other side of it, the other side of it for me is expression. How much of expression is a good thing? On this ultra, I allowed myself to express a little bit more to myself how I was feeling, you know, like when I was finding it hard I'd let my face do the expressions and I'd rather than kind of not necessarily pretending but just not acknowledging it um, because it felt cathartic to do that and it didn't feel like it was a, you know a bad thing or harmful but I, I'm curious as to when it goes on for longer how helpful is it actually to express any emotion and to what degree is it actually more important to express no emotion <laughs> and to, to just be numb to it until it's over but then equally the other side of it is I don't do this to finish it I don't you know like you know for the first at least 10 hours of this it was I don't want this to end this is just so fun and by fun I don't mean you know I'm laughing and it's comfortable and by fun I just mean it just feels so important and good and grounding to just be doing something that you feel so many different elements and it's so simple you know you just have to do one thing you just have to keep moving forward and you have to sustain yourself to do that and that's why I love it because it's simple and it takes all the other bullshit of life away and it just becomes just this one simple important thing that you're just back to being an animal again and that feels good always 
and you're adventuring, you're outside, you're playing in the earth and it's wonderful. And, you know, part of me, I, I don't want to do, I don't want to run a hundred miles just to get to the end, to then finally go, oh, thank God it's over. I want to fully open myself up to the experience and be right there with it and to sit next to the big deep dark abyss, whatever it is that you experience during, but to be okay to sit there. I don't want to, I don't want to be running away from, from a feeling or from discomfort or from pain or from this is hard. I don't want to be running away from that for a hundred miles because that sounds awful and also that sounds incredibly unfulfilling and and shit. So really, I guess, to sit on the edge of the void and to be able to look into it without needing to run away. I don't know what that void is, by the way. It's a very dramatic word, but I'm going to use it. it. Sounds quite good. Anyway, I think that's all. But this was apparently <laughs> this was apparently training, so I'm back to training soon. Um, I'm having like four days off and then back to running. And then in four weeks and five days, I'm going to attempt to run 106 miles across Scotland. And my brain is so terrified by that idea. And also there is something in me that is equally so excited I could explode. Um, and I'm very confused by it all. I don't know if I've said, I'm so confused by it all.